Hey everyone, my name's Taylor. I'm a director, cinematographer, colorist, and editor, and I've been working professionally for a little over 10 years, mostly doing brand work, but I do a little bit of everything here and there. Um, and about four years ago, I made the transition to Resolve from Premiere, uh, and I've never turned back. I did it primarily so I could color in the same place that I was editing. And I've always heard people talking about Dehancer, and I do use a couple of other uh, film emulation plugins in Resolve, but I've always been curious to try Dehancer, and it just so happens that a few weeks ago, someone from Dehancer reached out to me and asked if I'd be willing to make a tutorial slash review on the product. Um, so to be transparent, they did provide me with a license to do this, um, but all the opinions are my own. Um, I'm going to be honest with how I like using it and how I use it in my workflow. So I'll actually run through the product and then I'll give you a little demonstration of how I use it in my grading. So let's jump on in. All right, so here inside Resolve, I've got a string out of all the clips that were in the intro of the video. These are all from various projects that I've shot over the last year or two. Um, and I'm working in a color managed uh, project, which is really helpful because all of these clips were shot on different cameras. I've got Red Raw, I've got Black Magic Raw, and I've got Sony S-Log3. And so uh, color management just allows me to monitor all that footage automatically in a Rec. 709 profile, appropriate to whatever color space it was shot on. Um, and so I'm still able to grade the log images, but I don't have to look at the log image, which is really helpful. Um, and the other reason color management is so helpful is because it takes my footage and puts it into a much larger color space for grading before it's converted back to Rec. 709. Um, so in this case, I'm working in DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, which Dehancer also has a setting for. Um, so using Dehancer in a color managed environment is very easy to do. Now, when I use a plugin like Dehancer, on a project, I like to use it either in the group level or in the timeline level, um, depending on the use case. If I have to use graphics and logos, things like that, um, I'll group just the footage into a specific group and apply Dehancer that way. Uh, but in this case, since I have no um, graphics that I'm working with, I'm just going to switch over to the timeline node graph and then add a serial node. And then under my effects library, I'm going to scroll down to film emulation and use Dehancer Pro. So once I drop this on, I'm getting some kind of funky results and that's because I need to go in and set my parameters for my color space. In this case, my source is DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, but if I wanted to use this um, maybe just by itself, and I wasn't using color management, I could actually go in and choose my camera and do the proper conversion that way. Um, but I'm gonna choose DaVinci Resolve Wide Gamut Intermediate as my color space, and already I'm starting to get closer to the image that I want. Now initially I have um, a few settings that I can adjust up here. These are primarily regarding my exposure and my color balance. I'm not gonna go through every setting and, and tell you what it does, I think what's most important when you're using a plugin like this is you find what works for you. Me personally, I'm not going to use every single thing that's available inside Dehancer, um, but it's nice to know that, that it's there. Under Film Developer, you have some settings um, regarding your contrast, gamma, and color separation, and color boost as well. Um, once again, these aren't really settings that I use, but where I do start to use the things inside Dehancers under my film setting. Um, so it defaults currently to Kodak Vision 3 250D. Um, one of my go-tos is Kodak Vision 3 200T. Um, this actually gives you a much warmer starting point for your image. It works really great for daylight footage, which is what this is, um, even though it is a tungsten balanced film. The cool thing under the film tab is there are dozens of color and black and white negative film stocks in here. Um, and so I would just go through and play with all of them and, and see what you like, see what kind of reproduction um, you're into. One color that I really love out of these is the Velvia 50 from Fuji. 
Um, I'm a really big fan of the Velvia film stock in real life. And you can see once I apply that, I just get like this really nice soft saturation, but still a good amount of contrast in my image. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it with that. Also under my film, I can adjust uh, the exposure value of that film stock itself. Under film compression, there's a few options in here also, which I don't use. If I do use any of these, I use the color density option, but for this tutorial, I'm going to bypass that. Under expand, you simply have your uh, black and white points, um, and then you have a color mode, which is normal, or just using luma, which is the luminosity of the film print. And now under print, you have linear, which will just put the color through of your negative option. Um, you have Cineon Film Log, which is a log profile used for uh, film printing. That will give you a literal log, super flat look. Um, and then you have Fujifilm 3513, which is a very popular film print stock used by Motion Picture, as well as Kodak 2383. Um, which gives you really that like color separation of the warm highlights, cool shadows. Um, and then you also just have Kodak Endura glossy paper, which is just giving you a more kind of contrasty version of what linear would give you. So I'm gonna choose 2383 because that's why everyone's here, let's be honest. And once I do that, I also have a few options for this film stock. These I don't use too much. I might add a little bit of the color density in here and then bring the saturation back just a tiny bit. Color density is important because film generally has very dense color in it. Um, even if it's not very saturated color, it is very dense, it's very rich. Um, so adding a little color density really helps sell that film effect. Now under color head, this is where you would do any kind of color balancing as well as a warm, cool balance in your shadows, midtones, and highlights. Under film grain, uh, which is automatically enabled, one of the reasons I think a lot of people like Dehancer, you have a lot of presets to choose from. And then you also have your custom tab, which allows you to really dial in um, everything you like. Me personally, I don't like how grainy the 35 millimeter setting is. So I like to go choose the 65 millimeter ISO 50, um, which just gives you this really subtle, nice grain to work with. And then I switch to custom and I bring my shadows all the way down because I don't want any grain in my shadows. I want it in my highlights and my midtones. Um, when you see grain in your shadows, it gives the impression that you had um, underexposed noisy footage, in my personal opinion. Uh, further down from film grain, we have halation. Once again, you have settings that you can choose from or you can choose custom. Um, this one you do have to enable, and this is GPU intensive um, or processor intensive if you don't have a good GPU. I'm running on a uh, M1 Ultra Mac Studio, so I can actually play back a lot of these effects in real time with Dehancer um, or with a very slight lag, but most of the time I can get real time playback. Um, Halation, let me go ahead and zoom out. Halation does warm up your entire image. Um, so that's one thing that you do need to be mindful of when you're doing balancing. So I'm going to leave mine enabled just for the sake of this tutorial. And if you want, you can also go to the custom mode and adjust all of your individual parameters for your halation. Bloom, I will just go ahead and turn it on and off. It just gives you um, essentially what like a, a, a mist filter or a diffusion filter would give if you had it on your lens, um, but this allows you to do it in post. Film damage will put um, dust and scratches on your film. And so depending on, on what kind of stock you choose, um, 60 millimeter will have a very clean, you know, almost no film damage. Whereas if you choose eight millimeter, um, if I were to choose that and play this back, oh, I almost forgot I have to enable, there we go, enable my film damage. If I were to play this back, you can see all the, the scratches and the dust that appear on that. Whereas if I were to go to the 65 millimeter, it's very clean. You don't really see much of that, that film damage. 
I'll go ahead and turn that off. Film breath is something that occurs in the projection of film where you get kind of a, a pulsating of, of light. It's something very subtle and I, I, I would generally not use this effect myself, um, but if you want to like really overly sell the film effect, um, film breath is, is one way to do that. Uh, I'll go ahead and give you the eight millimeter example because that's where it's the most intense. Oh, I always forget, I gotta enable these things. So you can see that there's also kind of a, a shift going in my, um, in my tint. There's kind of a, a green magenta shift going on, um, but the light is also, uh, you know, moving up and down. If I were to go something like 35 millimeter, it's a much more subtle effect. Now under gate weave, this is another trait of film that uh, once it's projected or digitized is obvious and it's because the, the sprockets that pull the film through might have a little bit of play in them. Um, and so this would just basically, um, if I enable this, it will allow the picture to kind of just have like slight movement in it every once in a while. The 35 millimeter gate weave won't be as obvious as something, again, like eight millimeter. You can see it has, you know, this like full shake going on to it now. But once again, it's just another effect that you can use to really sell the, the film look of your image. Vignette is pretty self-explanatory. Under monitor, you have really great tools like false color, um, which actually gives you the scale on the side so you can see where you're at in your exposure chart and you have a clipping indicator, which is, uh, there's nothing clipping in this image, but if I were to have something too bright or too dark, I would actually get lines on the screen to indicate my clipping. Uh, and then under my output, this is essentially like your, um, your global adjustment and resolve. It will, it will determine how much of this effect is being applied to your image. Um, it's a good way to maybe split the difference uh, of what you've done if it's a little extreme, um, but you can also take that out by switching over to the, the keying tab and uh, lowering your key value as well. Um, and then you have a LUT generator, and if you need to, you can export a LUT, reapply that um, at the node level, which will save you a lot of processing power. Um, so if you maybe want to design a look and just apply it across the board to footage, um, exporting a LUT is a great way to do that. Also, if you know how to set up Dehancer at a camera color profile level, you can export a LUT, import it into your camera if your camera allows that, and um, use those for monitoring LUTs if, you're, if you want to um, you know, see a more creative look while you're on set. And then lastly, under your options, you have uh, normal, fast, or high quality, which is a little slower. Once again, if you switch it to high, you better have a computer that can handle it. Um, once again, I can get real-time playback on my machine um, only because I have a, a, a much faster computer these days than I used to. Um, but I think for most people, just work on the normal profile, and then when you're ready to export, you can switch it to high. Now, the way that I would use this in my grading workflow is basically once I have my settings here at the timeline level, I'm going to switch back to my node graphs and I'm going to start going through and adjusting these things on my own. I have a Resolve Micro Panel here in front of me. Um, this is the reason I like to use the other tools in Resolve. They're a little bit more granular and I can have a lot more control over what I'm doing rather than the tools built into Dehancer. Um, but Dehancer gives me that really good starting point for where I want to go with my footage. And so really quickly, I would just come over here and I might, um, you know, bring my exposure down a little bit. I'll switch over to my ratio node where I do my contrast. Um, for this one, I might lower my contrast a little bit and switch my pivot. Um, under my balance here, let me go ahead and actually just bring up my scopes. Um, under my balance, I think this image could actually do to be warmed up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit of warmth, something like that. 
Um, and then in my saturation, I might actually bring my saturation down just a little bit. And so now if I look at my Rec. 709 versus where I am now, it's a very different image and it's definitely um, much more filmic in terms of color. I'm not so much a fan of adding all of the film effects to um, like the gate weave and, and the film damage and things like that. I still like a clean image, but I love the color of film. And so that's, that's the main reason I would use Dehancer. Um, so once again, I would just like go through these nodes and uh, adjust as needed um, some of these parameters. Once again, add, um, you know, a little bit of warmth in here. And so really quickly, I can move through my timeline and, and grade all of these clips um, in a way that I'm using Dehancer to give me that really good starting point and to give me a filmic image in terms of color and the grain quality, the halation, um, but then really use Resolve's powerful tools to shape my image more. Um, and so this is the way that I would go through grading my projects personally. Hopefully this is helpful for you. So what's the final verdict? I think Dehancer is an awesome tool and I definitely see myself using it in my workflow. I think aside from all of the different uh, creative color looks that you can get with their emulations, their halation and their grain is so easy to use compared to the other tools out there. I think it's a really great starting point for people who maybe uh, struggle to find um, creative inspiration in their grades uh, or who just wanna add that filmic look to their footage. Um, I think also for people who might be reluctant to use all of the tools in Resolve, that Dehancer is a really great tool to just have um, all of your controls in one place. So if you don't wanna go use all of the different tools in Resolve, you really could just stay on Dehancer and, um, and do all of your adjustments from there. Now, if you are interested in purchasing Dehancer, I do have an affiliate code. If you use the code Motion Hatchery, you will get 10% off your order and I will get a 10% commission off of that. If you don't wanna buy it, no worries, but um, they've got a lot of great products. That code is applicable to uh, the full pro version or you can buy any of their individual products as well. So hopefully this was helpful for you and you're able to somehow use Dehancer in your own workflow. Thanks for watching.